Hello once again everyone. So today we're going to be covering some more sword and buckler stuff. So those of you who are in my sword and buckler class will of course be familiar with some of this material. Those of you that are looking to just jump in or need a refresher, here is kind of the first part of this. And joining me is Jake. Just took him out of the basement. He's all excited to see the sunlight again. But point being, I went over how you just do the actions and now we're going to go over how to do the partner as well as filling in what we've worked in up till now. So, first and foremost, there is the couple different versions of the drill. We're going to start off with the passive version. That being, off of the draw, I lower my sword. I am currently fencer B, or the patient, which means that Jake, as the agent or fencer A, is going to be always attacking and always winning. Right? So, by me lowering my sword, I'm saying, hey, you are attacking first. We will be doing the standard version. So our very first action is going to be, he's going to pass in against me, and I'm just going to go ahead and marry my sword and buckler together. Now, if I were to look in to fight back at Jake, I'd do what I just did, which is triangle step or what have you, but right now we're far too close to promote the rest of the kata. Being the, to use judo, judo terminology, the uke here, my job is to allow Jake to do everything at his appropriate distance. So here is too close, I would probably instead need to step back. So we do that again, we both draw, I show passivity, he attacks at me, now I've made it so he slips off very easily and he can take my next opening, which once again I will be passing backward with. Now for this cover, I'm just turning my sword over to my outside line, catching with the true edge, but I also want to go ahead and put my buckler here. The reason being is that these attacks, when they come in for realsies, I don't need to marry it over my hand because he's attacking at my head slash my shoulder, so I'm going to go ahead and just put my buckler in the way. So that way it locks down his ability to do certain bunny trails that we'll get to later, right? But by this, I have locked it down. He can no longer attack me. But I don't, I don't have anything set up. So at this point, I would back away and take my high guard. He prompts into the low guard as per the combat. So let's back up and do that again. So the two attacks back to back. We draw, passive, one, two. Nice and simple. I back off and fold up, he goes down and folds down. Nice and simple. Always when you're doing this, the uke or the patient or whatever you want to say, I'm going to say because it's simple, is always retreating off. He does not move into the next ward or the next piece until I've given him the opening. The idea being here that we're teaching you as part of the kata to always be moving into a strong guard, but only do so when the threat has been cleared. Now, following this, uh, actually, let's do that real quick on the other side. So, yep, you're fine. A little bit back. Right about there. Draw. Passive. One. Two. You see, I'm just protecting myself here. I back away. He holds down. The next signal can be a couple different things, but the simplest way of doing it, since I want him to target the outside, once I fold it down, I'm going to go ahead and either open my buckler or move it slightly to the inside so that he has this line of attack. He's then going to strike up with the Dolphin Shields, and I'll just be bringing my sword and buckler over together to protect me. At this point, I'm done moving. Jake is then going to use me as a framing device to step up with his buckler using the shield shot to push my weapons together and then strike me in the head or on the arm on my outside line. At this point, the drill is done, I let my weapons go down, I step away, he returns to guard, and then he is done as well. So we'll show that second part again. So, he's folded down, I'm folded up, I give the signal, defend, frame. Nice and simplistic, drop, he's good. So now, Jake and I will go ahead and show the full passive exercise, and for this, we're going to come and kind of stay in place because this travels rather significantly and I can't make the camera track us. And then we're done. Nothing too complicated there. The biggest thing is just focus on setting your distance with your partner so that he can move, he or she can move to their preferred ability, especially in regards to the initial two attacks. Those are relatively far reaching, so you need to really pay attention as to how much distance you're giving them or if you're accidentally stepping in. 
In regards to the latter two attacks, you want to encourage them to step nice and deep. The doppel shield should be hitting kind of like here, right? So make sure you're locking that down, but you've also opened up that easy framing. So don't drop your hands until after they have made contact, etc. But that was the passive version of the drill. Let's really quickly go over the left-handed version since we have an avid left-hander. Normally left-hand sword and buckler, bit of a nightmare, but it's actually not that bad, right? The only thing that changes, um, on the attacker's perspective, nothing changes. The openings are the same, but the parries are gonna change. So, we just drew, I go passive. Now what's gonna happen is as he attacks, I am going to parry with my long edge, pushing it forward with my knuckles to the outside, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my buckler over my knuckles to make myself safe. This is a perfectly logical parry, it keeps me nice and safe, if I were doing it right-handed, I'd do it against that, right? This should allow him to slip off regardless of distance, actually, but you still wanna maintain nice and far back. So here's that again, we draw, I'm low, he attacks, defend, then when the next attack comes in, now I just marry them together like I ordinarily would. Now for this one, we still wanna encourage him to have that buckler open. So make sure that you're defending a little bit back. You may even want to go into more of a hull shield type position as opposed to out here, as we want him to still be doing things the way he's doing them. But later down the line, we'll be talking about some alterations you can make. From there, you then move into the next part, which since I just defended here and I back off, in this case, Jake will back off to show, right? Rather than me going up, I'm instead going to go ahead and drop my sword down to give him now a much clearer opening, at which point I defend with my sword and my buckler together. I recommend that you mostly defend with the sword since it's on your sword side, it's a very simple parry to make, but still have your buckler in the way to protect yourself just in case something happens. He then should be able to frame without any difficulty. He's just now controlling your buckler arm instead of your sword arm. So we'll switch sides and show that whole exercise. So, draw, passivity, Two, I back off. Carry three, carry four, we're done. Now, that's the left hand version. Beyond that, nothing changes. So, now let's talk about some alterations. This is where signaling comes in. So, like I said, we both draw, and the predetermined patient lowers their weapon. That tells us we're just doing the classic version. If the patient remains with their weapon up. What this signals now is that the patient is going to attack first on that initial action, and then again at the start of the second part of the drill. So when Jake is up in you know, Lugesland slash Bogen, I would attack him from here, and then later when he is down in Navenhutz, I will attack here again. So basically every other attack, I get to go first. This means that now Jake is going to have to practice the other aspect of these two attacks, those being that they are counter attacks. This means we have to add a slightly altered step. So let's look at that. We're both draw, I remain up. This is now signaling to Jake, I'm coming at you. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch my attack, and as I come forward, Jake is looking to step at me and go ahead and set up a nice, you know, good shot over my buckler at my face. Now, he doesn't immediately go to the next attack because there's that threat there. If I'm going to make it so he can, I'm going to move my sword out of the way, thus inviting the next attack. It should be the same. The pattern doesn't change. But I do add that slight defense because if I don't feel the need to defend, his counterattack wasn't very good. So, here's that part again. We draw. I attack first. Oh, there's a point in my face. Defend. And now we're back to how it was. I back off and go up. He stays down. Now, we already determined that I'm attacking first. So as I come forward now, he's going to have to sweep up into the doppel shield to both defend and hit me. So that's pretty scary. If he does hit you here, keep doing the drill. He should. But I'm still going to take that time to focus on his sword, at which point he will now push his buckler forward. So nothing really terribly complex changes. Just now, he does them as counterattacks. We'll switch sides, show that whole thing. And then we've only got one more variation. So, we draw, I stay up, attack number one, defend, attack number two, we back off, attack number one, defend, attack number two, 
drill done. Nice and simple. The only other signal that we have added so far is we both draw, and this time the predetermined agent, which will now be me, reverses their sword. So here's how you get here. In this case, I am the agent, Jake is the patient, which I was, right? So Jake is always going to lose. We draw, Jake lowers, we do the classical drill. Jake stays up, I don't respond, he attacks first. I turn my sword over after he has stayed up, I am now going to do a different attack. I know it can seem a little bit confusing, but with a little bit of practice, it doesn't really affect things. Now, what are my two attacks? I have two options. Because Jake is now located in this position, my different attacks are going to be ones that will circumnavigate his buckler. So my two attacks being the Stutzhau, wherein I'm going to turn my pommel to the outside, so that way I shoot over his buckler, or the Schilhau, in which case I turn my pommel to the inside to shoot over his buckler. Both of these can hit initially, or they can end up in a parry and one more attack. So I'll show the initial hit. First I'll do it without a buckler, so you can see my hand nice and clearly. But, we draw, he stayed up, I show I'm going to attack him first, he goes okay. I'm going to step forward like it is an overhaul, almost until I hit his shield. Then I'm just going to turn it over and I should plunge naturally into his face or breast. My buckler remains here to lock out his potential offensive options, and he will most likely have to focus on instead defending himself, which is good for us. Option two, I do the shield how instead, so we draw, hey, I'm going to attack you first. This one you want more offline movement, and I'm going to move into the doppel shield. So I attack, and I turn my sword to the inside, and my shield will be right here marrying them together. This one again, he's more likely to respond by defending himself. So, now I will show those with the buckler. Nice and simple. Or option two, shield, shield. Nice and simple. Now, the two defenses that I prompt are slightly different. If I do the shirts, him bringing his sword over doesn't really help, right? Instead, he's going to start raising his buckler. So my next response will be to dip and simply thrust to the low opening, and that's done. So that whole bunny trail would look like this. Draw, here, shifts, under. Nice and simple. Option two, I do the shield. This one, it is more logical that he defend with the sword. <laughs> Sorry, I stuck in, right? When he pushes me over, I just use that same device we used before. It's exactly the same because it put me in the doppel shield. That same opportunity is there. Let's switch sides and show that. So first, the shirts. Nice and simple. And you do want to attack below his buckler, not around the side. And now the shield. Nice and simple. And that's how you take a kata that we worked on. We've added some new pieces and we've made it dynamic so that both fencers can determine ahead of time how the drill is going to go. At that point, you can also start adding in the idea of, hey, do I defend on this one or do I not defend on this one? The studs or the shield could hit initially, etc. But those are our total options and we'll be adding more of them soon. Otherwise, thank you very much, Jake. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below or inquire with me in person. Otherwise, though, thank you very much for watching, and we'll go over some other techniques another time.